Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I want to dye some dry stroll fingering weight yarn with some jacquard acid dyes to see what kind of patterns that we can get as we attempt to absorb small amounts of dye onto the dry yarn. In today's video, I will use 100 grams of the Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is a superwash wool nylon blend, a dish basin, where we will use to apply the dye to the, bear, or to the dry yarn, and then we have jacquard acid dyes in the colors silver gray and black. And the, both of these dyes I mixed by adding a third of a cup of the 1% stock solution to the bottle and then I added about one teaspoon of white vinegar to the dyes themselves. Since we didn't pre-soak the yarn, we haven't added any acid to it yet, and in order for acid dyes to bind to yarn, you need to have some acid present. So this will also be a test of whether adding acid to the dyes themselves will help, will work to dye our yarn. I filmed a similar technique where I dyed a dry sock blank that is the same fiber content with these exact two mixed dye vinegar solutions. I did, I did a similar technique on stro dry stroll yarn with a tulip tie-dye kit. And there I sort of mixed the colors together and then rubbed the yarn around it. Today I'm going to focus on applying dye to one half of the yarn with gray and then the other half the black. So let's start with our gray. Alright, and I'm going to just apply the dye to a light coverage on the basin, take half my yarn, sort of wiggle it around. And so what I'm expecting is that we will see some specks of color, we'll have some light coverage, we'll have a lot of white but it'll also just be kind of cool and different than an effect that we would get if we tried hand painting the yarn with these colors. It's a little hard to only put half of the yarn down into the bath, into this basin and still get some decent color coverage from our gray, but you can see that we're getting this sort of mottled, mottled look, which I mean, I'm super excited by. Now I'm starting off with less of the gray than, than the black um, yarns. And I am trying to keep things somewhat, <laughs> somewhat clean so I don't twist up my skein too badly. I did not add any additional ties because I'm sort of bad like that, but you can see that kind of still actually pretty good. There we go. <laughs> you know, I have one of the ties at one end and one of the ties down on the other, and so I see some section where I'd like to add color. Now you can pour the dye directly on the yarn. I'm doing this sort of like press and wiping technique because, whoops, <laughs> I like the way that paper towels that I use to clean up my work surface sort of take up dye. I think that that's really cool. All right, now the, the gray, there's a tiny bit, we come out, there we go, tiny bit left. The gray is sort of the easier color to do and to start with because it is not, um, <laughs> it's not as potent as the black, but anyway, here we, here we go. You can see that there's just, <laughs> you know, it looks like I just poured ink into here, but the thing is, you know, look and see how it's like speckled. Oh, let me, okay, this hand's clean. Let me zoom in. Look at how the dye has sort of speckled and beaded 
onto the yarn there. Um, if the yarn was wet, it would have sort of sunk and spread. So giving these dry, like giving this yarn a dry rub almost of the, of the different colors will give us a much more speckly result. And so again, since I only have two ties, I am keep, sort of keeping track of where the ties are located so that way I can adequately, uh, you know, keep, keep it separated and make sure that we don't end up with a super duper tangled mess, only a mildly beautiful tangled mess, right? And so I'm bringing in some of this intersection region so we can have some, maybe some black mix in with some of the gray. And I'm also kind of keeping an eye out for some white sections within this black region so I can try spreading out the yarn, sort of dipping, you know, to get some nice coverage over here. Because, you know, we want this with this technique, I want some white, but not too much white. And it looks like in the gray section I might have some white pat some bigger white patches, but I think that that's okay. And you can see that there is sort of this nice difference between the black and the gray. But if you know, if you find like a nice big white section, you know, pull it out on your hand and start there when you're wiping up the color. <laughs> And so you could stop at any point. I mean, I'm sort of aiming to use up this dye that I have here. So that's one of my goals. So I will have some more coverage of this black dye on the yarn, but there's no reason why you have to do that. And oh, this is so, so pretty. Um, there's definitely some black that is going up onto my more gray section, but I think that that's, whoops, okay. I don't think I really attempt to try to keep more, <laughs> it'd be pretty hard to do more than two colors with this kind of application, <laughs> but I think that's the last little bit of the black that I've got sort of rubbing the last little bits and then let me lay this out for you. So we've got this really mottled coloration with some really dark black patches and some gray patches but a lot of white and a lot of speckling and so I think that this will be a really really fun yarn. But now we need to set the color, and we're going to do that by placing the yarn into a steamer basket, which I am bringing over right here. You could wrap up the yarn in, with some plastic wrap, and I'm choosing not to. I'm choosing, because I'm curious if the colors will spread out, I'm choosing to just place this in a steamer basket, and we are going to go ahead and put this and start steaming this right now. I just placed the steamer basket with our black and gray yarn into my dye pot and I already had some warm water at the bottom but it's still sort of coming up to a boil. You can see that it's starting to get cloudy as we're bringing up the steam and I'm gonna go ahead and steam this for 20 minutes. It has been 20 minutes so I'm gonna turn off the heat and remove the lid from our dye pot. And our yarn actually, well maybe some of the grays spread out more, but I definitely see some specks of color on this yarn. I'm gonna lift it up and place it in to this 
dish so that way it can cool off. You can see that the yarn right now is steaming so it is nice and hot. I am also curious, however, aha, uh -huh, the pot, and the water underneath is clear, which means that the dye that we added stayed in the yarn and none of it dripped down below. So now we need to let this yarn cool and then we can wash it. It is now time to wash our yarn. Since it was not very wet, it cooled really, really fast. Um, which you know could be a blessing because it means I can wash the yarn faster but also a bit of a, a downside because maybe that means the colors didn't set very well but let's start adding some water and seeing if any of this color comes out Now the fibers are actually rather dry here right now. You might notice that I am taking care when I pick up the stain so that way I don't end up with a tangled mess. And as I move it through this rinse water, you can see that you know I try to hold it by the stain. So there is a hint of color coming out in the water, but it's nothing Nothing like one would expect if the, you know, if this dye had not set. Then you would see tons of color coming out like when we did the tie-dyed yarn. So now, I've taken off my gloves, I'm going to add some clear dish soap to our bath to help dislodge any of the excess dye and anything else that there could be in the yarn. I mean, you see that, you know, this yarn is not, this water is not free of color. We've got kind of a dirty yellow or brownish color coming out. But most of the dye is in the yarn, which, yay, I mean, that's what we wanted, right? So now, now I will just rinse out the rest of the soap and make sure the water runs clear and then I will hang up the yarn to dry. Here is the finished dried yarn. We have some really long patches of color in addition to some really, really cool speckling. Overall, this will give a really, really nice mottled feel to the yarn. I love that the silver gray looks way darker when you apply the dye to the yarn than once you have it dyed. Um, at some points it looks almost indistinguishable from the black, but here you really can see the difference. I recently received a question from a follower about how to dye yarn if you wanted to make something that sort of emulated a brindled coat of, say, a dog. And I think that this technique would really, really help with that. If you were to first dye yarn a deep brown and then sort of use this technique to apply black over the brown, you could get these random segments of colors that would be perfect for knitting a toy of a brindled dog. The colors are definitely uneven, and in some areas when you open it up you can see that there are more sections of white in here. But overall I think that you won't get something that really feels super stripe-like. I mean yes, with some of these sections you might end up with some micro striping, but it will overall be have a very random feel to where the specks go, but still have some sort of consistency because there will be gray and black throughout the yarn. I am beyond enamored with this technique, and I cannot wait to use this as an over dyeing technique to say first dye a variegated yarn and then randomly apply black on top of it, I think would just be a really fun way to create a unique skein of yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this dyeing experiment. As you may have noticed, I am really enjoying exploring with this technique 
of applying dyes to yarn while the yarn is still dry. I really, really love the little specks of color that we get and the overall mottled feel of the yarn. I'm sure that it'll knit up absolutely beautifully. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release new videos every week and I love pushing the ways and exploring new ways to apply dye to yarn. Thanks for watching!